right, we got a geothermal here that's not heating. So let's go in here and take a look at it. Geothermal is nothing more than a water cooled heat pump. So let's go take a look, see what we got going on. Yeah, it turned on. Let's see what it kicks off on. He reset the breaker, which wiped out the code. So let's see what code we got. All right, so the fan didn't come on. So we might have a bad fan motor. This is one of the self-contained carriers. Five minutes later. All right, so the motor ended up being bad. Tested it out with my little TechMate Pro here. It's not the fanciest thing in the world, but it works for most motors. And uh, so we went and picked up a new motor, just got it installed. Nice thing about this one is it kind of comes out in multiple pieces, so you can leave the big old heavy blower there inside the furnace. So we're going to get this thing back in there, and we're going to test the system out, make sure everything's working correctly before we wrap this thing up. This is uh, the pre-carrier um, Infinity system, and I did find we had a wire down there that is burnt. You can see that right there. So... We're going to check that capacitor, make sure that's good, and then uh, repair the wire, if, uh, and then go from there. But that's that's where we're at right now. It appeared that the coil was getting warm, so we'll, we'll double-check the operation and see how it is before we go on to the next one. Another complaint was uh, when it does run, it wasn't keeping up. So I went ahead and checked the electric strips out. Power is completely off here. Went ahead and went through and checked resistance through the limits and the elements, made sure they was all correct, and made sure all my connections coming down to the fuses is fine, made sure all my connections inside there are tight, everything's good to go. So we're about ready to go ahead and kick it on, see if we can uh, make some heat, make sure this blower runs. All right, so it came on on its own. Didn't have to jump it after all. Got a Y1 signal there, and the blower is running, which is a good thing. Looks crooked in there for some reason but obviously isn't, it just looks like it is. No shake, that's great, so. Should kick on the uh, compressor here in a second. All right, so we've just begun checking it over. Went ahead and hooked all the probes up, got everything checked out. We. Uh, I've checked the auxiliary heat at 20 amps per leg, which sounds right. I checked the resistance prior to that. Air rise is right around 24.3. Subcooling you can't calculate right now because I literally have that one unhooked. It's super heat. There's our supply and returns. And calculated airflow looks like it's right in line. Temperature split obviously is not. The reason why it's off now is because the auxiliary heat just came on. Our subcooling superheat's not listed, but they look pretty much in common for what uh, this unit runs. Water in and out, we have a 9 degree delta, and our pressure is about 3.5, which comes up to 11 gallons per minute. You come over to your chart over here at 40 degrees, and you go to 12 gallons, you look at about 7.9, we're right at 9, 18 to 22, we're right at 24. So air and water temperature are right in line, which is how you generally check these out. Went ahead and got our pressures there on our loop. That's how we calculate the gallons per minute. And uh, I've already done detailed instructions on how to do this in one of my other videos, which I can always link up above. So everything seems to be working fine. I'm going to go up and make sure his wiring is correct and his programming on his thermostat's correct to bring on the auxiliary heat. I just wonder if he's confusing when the power wasn't or when the uh, blower wasn't running with uh, his problems or if it's been an ongoing thing. He said it's been running a lot. I wonder if it's an issue with the motor was cutting out or if there's a problem with the auxiliary heat not kicking on when it should. So basically what we're going to do is go up there and double check that um, and see how that's programmed. Early the next morning. What's up YouTube land? We are living the dream in cold area. So we're heading to a no heat call. It was working the other day, and then they were quit. They quit the other day, and then it started working, and now it's not working again. So we're gonna go check it out and see what's going on. All right. Okay. Let's 
So we got us a good sized zone system here with a heck of a run going to the upstairs. This thing is a pretty good sized house. Feels fairly warm in here. And there is the zone panel. Don't hear it running, but the house don't really feel that cold. What is that I see underneath the furnace? Looks like water, not a good thing. Hmm. Heck yeah. Let's try a tree variable. Let's take a look here and see what we got to work with. So we got a 42, and this is a um this has got all the fancy bells and whistles on it, so it definitely inducer motor fault, not a good thing. Had a couple of those go bad. And it says indicates inducer has not started within 20 seconds after a call for heat. Blah, blah, blah. So let's see what we got going on. Had one the other day that was kind of kind of crazy. And it ended up being the water was driven into the collector box because they didn't vent the line going from the furnace separately from the air conditioner and the humidifier was tied in with it and it piled the water up in there. So this looks creative. So there's the drain. So there's the drain. That's that's an interesting one. I actually got that to fit there like that. All right, so let's see here. At least they brought it in on the side so the cold air doesn't condensate over top the gas valve. They did that perfect, just back. And that goes right out the back side of the house. So we'll go and see if there's any issues there. We can go ahead and reset it real quick and see what we get it to do. Since we already kind of know what's going on. That looks like it's leaking. There's that old, nope, that's wet. That is quite creative. Look at that. What's that say there? No glue or glue? Either way, it's not. I don't know why we wouldn't have just ran it in a rubber hose. That'd have been a lot easier to get it out of the machine. We're going to bypass all the fancy infinity stuff so we can make it run. Okay, so they didn't glue it so you could take it apart so you get the motor out, but I don't know if I like that. I would rather have seen them use a rubber fern co. That uh, surprise doesn't leak either. Put a little bit of tape on that. Get that repaired. Oh, it's got a rubber seal in there. That's how they're getting away with it. All right. Well, we won't have to do that after all. I don't like the way it just snugs up all the way over there. Yeah, I don't. All right, let's see if we can make this thing run. Not hearing nothing happening. It's not good. It did not even try. That's not good. I'm going to make a heck of a trip to go get that thing because I'm even further away from the shop now. All right, let's see if we got power to this. All right, we do have 124 volts to the fan motor. So we must either be stuck in the fan blade or we're not getting control voltage to it. I have never really seen where they do their full-blown test to test this to narrow it down because it'd be great if they had a zebra thing or something for these. I'm sure they might have. Let's see if we can get this thing back on there. Okay. Probably would need to go grab my probe so I can back probe that thing, see if we can measure some voltage. Let's see if we can find some readings on it. All right, so we have 15 volts going to our outside two wires. 
So we've got some sort of communications going on. Not much. It wasn't fluctuating. They could be doing pulse width to where you wouldn't see it fluctuate. I have a bad feeling our draft motor's toasted. Try to give it another shot here and see what we get. Let's see if the control board responds normal. Let's see if we can get a blower signal. Blower works. So I know the board's able to control that. I'm hearing a click for the the uh, draft motor to run, but it's not doing anything. I said we got this bad motor. All right, so I'm down here in a basement. It's at no reception. Notice the flame sensor looks a little cruddy. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that up too before we forget. And then uh, I'll probably clean out that condensate trap as usual. Might see if I can't get us a hose of some sort to kind of make this thing work a little bit better. This is, uh, would be a lot nicer if it had a clamp on that with a hose, and then this would be flexible. Now, you've got to love when the guys run zip screws into that. They're so nice and sharp when you're trying to grab a hold of that to get that uh, pipe off. you got to be careful of that. So, the motor spins freely. Nothing uh, stopping it from spinning. So, unfortunately, it looks to me like we're going to have to go get a draft motor. So, go ahead and get that on. Uh, get a call in. Let's we'll see if they've got it. Got the flame sensor cleaned up. And we had to take out our piece here so that we could get into it. Because uh, it was a little too difficult to try to squeeze it out. It's always easier to get it out than it is to get it in. So, we got that in there. We're going to get these back in. And then... Uh, I found the uh, diagnosing procedures on this new app that I downloaded uh, that actually tells you to check the DC voltage on the plugs, on the pins here, and what uh, what it needs to be. The procedure there, you check voltages before and after. You flip a switch down here on the bottom. And so that's kind of useful. So anyhow, uh, that's on one of the apps, and uh, that was something I did. And since I don't want this to turn into a DYI channel, which is what it seems like some people think this is from the calls for generators and stuff like that, that's not what it was. It was for people to hopefully either gain some knowledge off of what I'm doing or just enjoy watching whatever your fancy is. So um, I'm going to start, uh, start showing less information, I guess, uh, from here on out, but we're going to go ahead and get this taped up a little bit better with some blue uh, monster tape And then we're going to clean that up and shove it together that compression fit uh, Basically has worked this long. I guess uh, we'll go ahead and put that back like that All right, so we've got the tape on there and look what's happening So we've got the flame sensor in there. We're getting ready to ignite I can hear the uh, trap making some noises because that water has been uh, been drained out when I was cleaning it out and uh, looks like we're good to go so she's working which is great um, so we'll go ahead and put it back on the controller there's really not a lot I mean you can like I said you can go through the diagnostics of the motor here which I'm going to make a copy for myself for later but um, you know having that with you is pretty nice you can see it's dropping down to the low position. You should always fire off about in the medium and then uh, start ranging from there based off whatever it feels comfortable with. So and there goes the blower. So we are on a roll, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and uh, wire this thing back up for the controller. All right, and this is what I like about Carrier compared to some of the other brands out there. We can see exactly what we've got here. We've got a setup of the thermostat. We can see what all this happy stuff is. We can also go in here and just see what exactly it's doing. So on the service information, furnace status, you can see exactly what it's running at percentage-wise, the CFM, blow RPM, static pressure, draft motor, leaving air temperature. That's because of the zone panel, all that happy jazz. I know some of the other manufacturers got something close to it, but... They've had this crap for a long time. 
So let's go into zoning status. There's a few zones, three, four, five, six of them. And last 10 events. My favorite part, inducer fault 91 times. Low pressure switch, which probably is because of the draft motor. High medium switch, same thing. So everything has been the um, draft motor related. So what we got. So we'll go through here and check some of the other things, some of the setups, shut off times, all that happy stuff, and then set them up, and they should be good to go. All right, so we checked the thermostat out. Everything checked out fine. All the zones are set to where the customer asked for them, and uh, pretty much everything's going good. So like I said, this is a pretty decent system. It's uh, got all the bells and whistles, and uh, everything seems to be working uh, and operating properly. So on to the next one.